Welcome back to season 31 of 7-Eleven Junior Hockey Magazine. I'm your host, Gino Retta. Time now for the CJHL Report. The Canadian Junior Hockey League brings together 115 teams in the nine Junior A leagues involving over 2,500 players from right across the country. Earlier this week, Hockey Canada officially announced the return of the Centennial Cup. However, it's a different format. To discuss that, now join us to CJHL President Brent Lads. Brent, welcome to the show. Great to have you with us again, my friend. Good to see you, Gino. So it's been two years without being able to crown a national champion in the CJHL. We're back to it now. The Centennial Cup is returning. First and foremost, how important and significant is that for the league? It's very significant, and it was probably the primary reason that we looked at uh, going to a different format to make sure we were able to undertake to host the national championship this year. Uh, not having held one for two years uh, was a huge void in our program so I think everybody and you know we have to thank uh, Hockey Canada their events uh, team and uh, certainly the CJHL board for their their understanding and uh, last but not least a, a group of people that have done yeoman service since uh, we've got involved in this discussion is the host committee in Esteban because um, their 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 uh, job went from being what it was to almost being doubled overnight and uh, they've really taken it on and done a Good job on paper right now. Anyway, different format though. I mentioned that off the top. Ordinarily, just for background for our listeners and viewers, uh, each region across the CJHL would have its own tournament, its own mini tournament, then crown a champion, and the champ would go on to play the Centennial Cup. That's not happening this year. Why, first off, and secondly, how are you going to make it happen? How do you decide who gets to go to nationals this year? Well, uh, traditionally, we'd have four regional champions and the, and the host team for a five-team event. And uh, what happened this year was that we had um, uh, two developments that, um, that really impacted on, on sort of leading up to that traditional way of doing things. One was uh, the uh, three leagues that are west of the Ontario-Manitoba border did not experience any interruptions in their schedule this year. So they're on, on cue to you know, to uh, meet the uh, obligation or timeline that was established originally. Uh, east of the Manitoba, Ontario uh, border was a totally different story. We had uh, five, six week uh, delays in some leagues. And uh, as we came back into our return to play in early February, uh, what we were hearing was that um, some of those leagues were really con uh, intent on trying to get a full uh, meaningful league schedule done before heading into uh, either regional or national championships would have, uh, which would have backed up the uh, Centennial Cup to a point where I don't think we would have been able to undertake right. it because of, uh, in some of these smaller communities, they just wouldn't have ice for playoffs and that late, late into me and that. So we sat down on our board and sat down with Hockey Canada and said, uh, well, what happens if we sent um, all nine league champions uh, to the Centennial Cup? And it hasn't been done before. Yeah. And so the more we talked about it, um, you know, the biggest question was whether the, uh, uh, the community in Esteban could, uh, would have the infrastructure to support it. And uh, after doing some deliberation, they came back after about two or three weeks and just said, you know what, we can do it here. We can do it. And uh, we started uh, more meaningful discussions. And, you know, that's where we got to uh, with the announcement on Tuesday. So now you're in a situation where you have nine league champions plus the host Estevan yeah. in a tournament. Is it a tournament format? Is it a bracket where you're playing uh, one game and then move on? How are you going to handle that? Because you got 10 teams yeah. to crown one national champion. Well, we're going to uh, adopt the template that's used for the World Junior Championships. Okay. And, uh, uh, two divisions of five teams and uh, work, you know, work through a round, a round robin in each division, eliminate one team. It'll cross over, uh, you know, semi and quarterfinal, and then, um, and then eventually a final for the uh, Centennial Cup. All right, so here's a question for you, and it might be a little premature because we haven't even done it the first time yet. If it works <clears throat> and you like the format, <laughs> I'm sure you've been asked this, is it something you would consider as a new format moving forward? There is uh, certainly going to be some discussion after uh, after this year's Centennial Cup as to whether that's going to be our approach uh, in the future. Um, there's a lot of considerations in there. First of all, the log logistics support doing it again. And then secondly, um, 
looking at uh, potential host centers and making sure that uh, there's sufficient infrastructure within our program that we can vary the, uh, the hosting site uh, from year to year in a reasonable way. I got to tell you, though, it is intriguing, especially when you compare it to the World Junior format, where you say we're bringing the 10 best teams in the country. Well, the nine best teams and the host, and hopefully that host is also one of the 10 best teams. And then you've got a one week, a, a two week period or a 10 day period where you crown a national champion from from a national audience perspective. It certainly seems like that would garner more national interest than potentially a regional four team tournament to crown a local champion. Do you, do you feel that way or is that something you want to watch and see how it plays out? No, I think you're, I think you hit the nail on the head. I think we all feel that way. And, uh, certainly, uh, you know, a 10 team event, uh, creates interest, uh, beyond the, what we traditionally have as the regional championships. And I think within the region, sometimes there's interest as your team goes to the regionals, but then if they, if they're not successful there, then the interest interest level dro drops off uh, in turn Centennial Cup week. This way, I think we'll keep all parts of the country interested right up to the end. In conversation with CJHL President Brent Lads, Brent, uh, there were uh, 14 CJHLers named to NHL Central Scouting's midterm rankings. Let me just continue to go down that rabbit hole that we're going down right now. If you have a national tournament like this in time before the NHL draft, does it give then even more potential exposure for your kids in your league right across the country to be seen nationally and to be seen in one location by the scouts? Is there an upside benefit to that? In theory, there is. And the, uh, our inability to host a uh, prospects game this year certainly would impact on that. Uh, I, I think if, you know, I was working with the, uh, an NHL team that's scouting uh, fraternity or, you know, with central scouting, that uh, that would be an attraction for sure. Uh, looking at the next season, there are two new franchises set to join the CJHL, the Niverville Nighthawks in the MJHL and the Sioux Lookout Bombers in the SI JHL. Uh, how, how thrilled are you to be able to say announce expansion in a time where we're coming out of a, a pandemic where people would just be merely thrilled just to have survival. Yeah, you're, uh, you're right. Um, I, I think the, uh, the advent of the uh, new teams coming in, um, we're certainly scheduled um, for this coming season and uh, nothing's happened to deter that. And I, I think it's the, it's the, it's the good work that our commissioners do in those uh, respective programs and, you know, throughout our, our nine leagues uh, that has created uh, I think sufficient interest in their own regions and uh, and I think uh, you know even if I uh, you know uh, can offer it I know even here in Alberta uh, there's always interest in new franchises and uh, the league has you know sort of adopted a framework whereby um, you know they you have to optimize and 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 make sure that you're serving the needs of the players uh, sufficiently but also maintaining that competitive level so I think in the in the um, uh, essence of uh, trying to do that, both the SIJHL and the MJHL uh, are taking, you know, respectively one new franchise for next season. So good luck to them. I got to tell you, man, after a couple of years of struggling through to get through this whole pandemic, and now we're coming on the other side and there's some exciting things happening as we look forward. Uh, really excited for you in the league and for hockey fans and players across the country. Brent, thanks for this. We'll talk again very soon. You take care. That was CJHL President Brent Lads, and that wraps up this week's CJHL Report, the Canadian Junior Hockey League. Your future is here. Still inside 7-Eleven Junior Hockey Magazine, he won a silver medal with Team Canada at the 2011 World Junior Championship, and now he's playing for the Buffalo Sabres. We'll check in with Cody Eakin in this week's edition of Where Are They Now? You're listening to Canada's only nationally syndicated junior hockey radio show. This is Season 31 of 7-Eleven Junior Hockey Magazine. And don't forget, you can listen and subscribe to the complete podcast by checking out any of your favorite podcast platforms.